Hello, hi, welcome to another video on my channel and we are two days away from this year, from Melody Festival and from Sweden's national final for Eurovision and it is so much bigger than only like a national final, at least to me, but I think I speak for a lot of people, a lot of Swedes, probably also for a lot of people outside of Sweden, so yeah, we are that close to the final, we have 12 acts and I just want to do a review about all 12 acts and in the end of it I give you my prediction and yeah so I don't want to waste any time let's get into this and before we start I want to remind you that on this channel you will get a lot of reactions but also reviews or rankings so if you are interested in those then subscribe to this channel and then you won't miss anything so here we go and we kick this off, of course, in the official running order. And the first of all 12 acts is Dani Saucedo with Dandi Danza. He qualified directly from the first heat that was six weeks ago. And the song is completely in Swedish. It's, it's funky. It is edgy in my opinion. And yeah it's in my opinion just nothing really special i think that the little extra is missing here he is popular in sweden and he did melfest i think three times before he did it in 2010 or 9 as a part of a group and in 2011 and 2012 he ended up twice on the second place and the year when he was a part of the group they ended up in third place so he's pretty successful I am not so sure about this entry to be honest because it's just not outstanding enough probably even though yeah the staging looks nice and and simple but effective but I just think that the song is a bit dated and yeah I just feel like this is not creeping the attention of of the of the audience and juries and especially the juries because a song in Swedish usually doesn't work really well with the jury so mm. probably an English song would have done better but yeah and I just think that he is over his horizon his best years were in 2011 and 12 probably he might have won in 2014 or 15 if we returned earlier but 2021 I think it's just it's just too late for him for really winning and yeah now other acts are the actual stars and yeah we continue with the second act it is Clara Hammerstrom beat of broken hearts and she qualified through the second chance round Anna Hansen last week and I think she did it in the third semi-final third heat and pretty ballad pretty ballad sounds contemporary and jury friendly I think well performed probably it is a bit too a bit too obvious and a bit too huh, like standard ballad I would even say again the same as I said about Dani Saucedo I just missed the like the one moment when I'm like okay yeah this is it let's vote for it it is nice, it's really good, and I think that this song is perfect for radio stations and Spotify. I think that a lot of people will stream this all day long. But as a song for a competition, I think it might be really well, might be a really contender for the juries, but mm, I don't know about the audience. But yeah, definitely a deserved qualifier, and we continue with the third act it is Anton Ewald new religion and second hit directly to the final and Anton Ewald it seems like he didn't even change his style it didn't even develop it just sounds like 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 the same that we've heard in in Melfres in 2014 and 13 and this is something I miss but on the other hand this is really like my kind of music I really like it and I will listen to this a lot of times I think and yeah 
he's giving us what we wanted probably. This is nothing like, hey, I developed a lot, I changed as, as, as an artist, so this is the new me and... No, this is Anton Ewald, how we, how we know him from, from his, his previous Melfest attempts and this might be a good thing, but however, I think that if we look at like, like further, like Eurovision, I think that this is just not the sound that works for 100%. It's like, like most of the people will listen to it and like, oh, that's nice, but nice doesn't win Eurovision. I think you know that. This is the problem, I think. It is just not, yeah, the, the, the little thing is missing that, that makes people vote for it. And yeah, that's the problem probably. And then we continue with the fourth act. It is oh, our, the mamas in the middle. We all know the story. Back singers for Jon Lundvig in 2019. They won Melody Festival and they almost won the juries at Eurovision and they returned as an artist, as a vocal group together without Jon Lundvig and won again with Move and now they are back for the third time and yeah we all know why because last year they didn't go to Eurovision because it was cancelled so now they think okay they can win again and ha have their fair chance and it is really a fair thing if they win because they deserve a place in the Eurovision Song Contest in my opinion. If it comes to me they even would have got like the wild card or direct free pass to the Eurovision Song Contest, but they decided differently. Let's talk about a song and about a performance. I mean, vocals are on top, we know that. I think the song with the topic is really good. The lyrics are, are touching and I trust, I trust true. I mean, they are singing about the truth and the song obviously gospel and this is probably the problem that I have and I think a lot of people have it as well is that after two years we are probably a bit sick of gospel and this shouldn't be too strict or however but I think it's neutral if you have like the same genre for years it just gets a bit boring and we want something else. I think this is the problem I have. The song is really great and I'm really sorry for that, but yeah, I think this is the problem. Lyrics great and I also think that move was probably a bit more cheering and, and better overall. I think that move was the better song, but yeah. Now we have in the middle and I think it is still in the running. It is in the running, it is a contender for the win and if it wins, if the mama win, the mamas wins again, it would be a deserved victory because they deserve the world, I think. And yeah, I mean, they have the true potential always. They always have the true potential because their vocals just fit so incredibly perfect and the juries love to see that and to hear that and yeah, big plus for the mamas. Fifth act is Paul Ray, Missing Piece. Anna Hansen making it to the final over Anna Hansen and he was in the very first heat and I liked his song. I also like, I love, I even love the staging. It was really excellent and yeah, just something effective and the song itself, it's nice, a nice radio pop, contemporary and yeah, it really fits to Paul Ray and to his, his voice and probably his, him as a person as well. I also think that it's a bit better than what he did last year and yeah, I really like the song and yeah, now we continue with the sixth act and then we are halfway through. It is Charlotte Pirelli, still young. The winner of Eurovision 1999 is back and she's back with a Schlager show and I think this is what we expected and this is what we wanted to see from her. And I think it's not even important if she wins or not or if she ends up well. I think if she ends up between place 5 and place 10 we are all satisfied with it. She came back, she's late and this is a 
surprisingly a really good song in my opinion. I mean, uh, in such a year, we need some up tempo, some upbeat, some some joy, and this gives it all. And yeah, it's just great. And also the topic still young and she's back. It fits perfectly with the singer, and this is what counts. So. Now we continue song seven. This is the bookie's favorite and it's to say with voices. I also reacted to voices as a song. Now I want to talk about the entire package of song vocals, person, personality, performance, staging, uh, just everything. And we start with him as a person and He's really, really nice and sympathetic and he has a story. We can really feel it. He's someone special and this is always so, it's such a plus if you have such an artist and I think you can, you can create a lot of great performances and songs with him as an artist. And yeah, his vocals are Absolutely amazing. I think he might even be the best singer of the year. And I saw him at Sverige Idol 2019. He won it all. It was so obvious in my opinion. And I thought that this act, this artist who has to go to Eurovision once. I don't know, probably one year, two years, five years, 10 years. I don't care. It just has to do it. Now it's 2021 and the song itself has a clear message that's great that's important and staging is okay it's really good i think they do an excellent job the song however like when we look at the, the, the melody and the music itself it's probably a bit too repetitive and and like typical idol pop winner song like i don't know if you get the point but just like an idol winner song or the voice winner song and yeah it just sounds a bit average to be honest but i also see that there's a lot of true potential i mean a lot of true potential at eurovision especially i think that the juries will love this act and yeah but i just fear that the public might not connect with this as we want it if it goes to Eurovision. But here from Melody Festival and he's popular in Sweden because of his idol victory. And I think that this might be the key for Eurovision this time. He is someone new, someone like a new face in this Melody Festival and world. This can work. And yeah, this is what I think about Tusse. And now it's Alvaro Estrella, Baila Baila. And this act is also from Anna Hansen. And I hope that this is not too, too negative for you or too hard. But I think that this is just nothing special. It's so boring and so predictable, cheesy pop, we like the Spanish, Viva La Forever, you and me together. <sighs> Tonight we gonna dance, baila, baila, or however. It's just, when we, I mean, I listen to the lyrics, I think, no, why are they doing this? This is so repetitive, so, like we've heard that stuff like a thousand times and over and over again, and now here again, it's just, nothing new nothing special and it's just a no i'm sorry and then we continue with the ninth act clara klingenstrom behöver inte dig idag and also anna Hansen, such a fresh swedish song it reminds me a bit of anna bergendahl what she did just in swedish and i think it works for melody festival and and it would be a risk for Eurovision because it's in Swedish, it's not in English, it's in Swedish. And this is like the main reason why it's a risk actually. Well, but anyways, the song is really good. She does a good job live and it's such a fresh, relieving song in my opinion. And yeah. It's, she, she is really high in my ranking, my personal ranking. She's really, really, really great. And yeah, I hope she will return to the contest next year. 
So, good luck. And then 10th act. We are only, we are almost through 10th act. Eric Sade and every minute. What can I say about this? Eric Sade, great artist, great vocalist. Staging is next level, I would say. This is really how you stage a, such a song or in general. And even this time, especially in this time, this works. This is exactly how to do it. This looks so professional and is probably the best staging we've ever seen in the last years, I would even say. And it's just how Sweden does it always. So it would be the, like the logical winner in my opinion. The song itself, it's modern as well. It's good as well. I mean, the lyrics, I love it in the morning, na 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 na, evening, na 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 na. I mean, that's not really, it's not genius at all, but does it have to be genius? No. I more care about the melody, about the music and the music itself, yeah. It's nice for an album, but probably not the right song for Eurovision. But I think it can work as well. I think this has a lot of true potential and probably even Talbot potential. So yeah. And as I said, staging plus, big, big plus. This is the best staging of the Eurovision season. And we did not have such a great staging in the last years, in my opinion. So yeah. And then only two acts left. Next up is Dotter with a little tot. She returned after her glorious second place with Bulletproof last year and her, yeah, okay, cry in 2018, let's keep this out. <laughs> She's back and the song itself, it's more poppy, I would say. It's definitely more and more pop. Probably it's too much pop for some juries or for some audience, but I think especially for such a contest, such a song works because the song is has a, a personal message. We can hear it, we can feel it, but it also, it also sounds international, it sounds contemporary, it sounds fresh and yeah, I think that a lot of people are like, okay, yes, this is it. This is a great song and I want to listen to this again and again and again. And personally, I'm addicted to that song and I think a lot of people are as well. And I am one of those who says that she should win, should go to Eurovision. And I also say it, this is by far the best song in my opinion, but yeah. And then only one act left. It is Arvingana and Tenke in the Alsgorham. We don't think about going home, something like this. Swedish Arvingana, they are from Heat 1 directly to the finals. And I mean, they're entertaining and they are big in Sweden or at least in the Eurovision Melody Festival and world. And I think that for that one show, they, we, we just need such an act in the final. And I'm happy that they are through. The song probably is a bit worse than I do from 2019, but I think it's still uh, like, it still has everything such a song needs and it is entertaining for the three minutes and I think the people will have to laugh and have fun through those three minutes so this is the important part of the song and I think it can work but I think that we shouldn't expect such a high result for them but no one talks about them as a favorite to win so they are here to enjoy it and this is what we need. So this is what I think. What do you think about all those acts? And I also said that I want to show you my prediction or like ranking, I don't know, about this Melody Festival and final. My prediction is that the juries will probably between Erik Sade and Tusse. I tend to Tusse, but I'm also thinking about Erik Sade doing really well with the juries and might win the jury votes. And then the televote, this is the important part, I think. This is the, this, like the, the, the everything deciding part of the show. To set plays an important role. Erik Sade, Dotter probably as well, the Mamas. Personally, I think that To set has the best chances to win. My hope, my 
my advance for Sweden would be Dr. Because I think that this is just the act that can do the best with juries and Televote. Probably Eric Sade or Tuse would do better with the juries than Dr. But we also have to keep in mind that we need both juries and televoting. And if we look at both, I think that Dr. would still do really, really well with the juries. She might win it as well. And she would also do well with the televoting in a contest, I think. So that's why my personal advance would be Dr. But my prediction is Tuse or Eric Sade. So this is what I think. What do you think about it? Let me know it in the comment section down below. And then, yeah, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. And give this video a thumbs up if you watched it until the end or if you enjoyed it or both. So let me know it and see you later. Enjoy your time. Bye.